Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome back for another card video. Today's card has a couple of interesting tips. I've got an embossing folder tip technique and also a Copic marker technique. So I created this card using the Some Odd Girl Hipster Pet Set using this kitty, the Spring Showers Die by Lawn Fawn, and this Brick uh, Embossing Folder by Tim Holtz. Now I'm going to start off by inking up my kitty in Memento Tuxedo Black ink on Nina Solar White cardstock. And I'm going to go ahead and color this kitty using some Copic markers. I have found that, um, I've tried this multiple ways, uh, I, I like covering my cardstock first with the lightest color. Um, I've tried going from dark to light um, with, you know, just on plain white paper, but I actually prefer covering the whole area with the lightest color first and then applying more colors uh, starting with the darkest. I find that you get the best blending using this technique. So I'm going to be using 40, four, and 43 and 44, um, so I colored the whole thing using 40 first, and then I went and started with the E44 and worked my way up. So um, I, as you can see, I'm, I've got a light source coming from the right hand side, so I'm going to have a lot of light areas on the right side of the kitty. Um, and then dark areas on the left side of the kitty. And you can see underneath where his fur is, there's going to be a dark shadow behind his front paws. There's going to be a shadow um, behind his right leg uh, on his back leg because my light is from the right, so you'll see a shadow on his back leg. So I'm just kind of working my way around and making sure that I hit all of those shadow areas. Now one of the last final touches I like to add is right here where I'm going in with my darkest marker. This is the E44 and I'm just going to hit those uh, darkest shadows area just a little bit extra touch right there um, and that'll really make it pop. Now notice that I'm also working in small areas and that's to get the maximum amount of blending on my paper so that my markers stay wet. So I'm just going to speed the rest of this up and uh, turn up the music and you can watch the rest of the color. Now for his ears, I did want to get a little bit of a pinkish hue. So I covered it first with E40 and then I went in with some E02 and added just a little bit of highlight and then I went back in with my E40 to blend those two colors together. And then I decided I wanted a little bit more. So what I did was I took my E02 and I put some on my craft mat and I picked it up with my E40 and I started in the corner and blended outward. And then for the nose, I'm just going to combine these two colors. All right, the next step is to get some texture on my kitty. So I'm going to take this stipple brush and I've got my colorless blender refill, which is this big bottle. And I'm going to squeeze a little bit out onto my craft mat. And then I'm going to get a dry tissue ready. I'm going to take my stipple brush and I'm going to dip it into this colorless blender. And you can see it soaks it right up. So you're getting quite a bit on the brush, which is why I'm dabbing it off on the tissue because you definitely don't want too much. It's better to go not enough first and then keep adding. So what's happening here is I'm kind of dabbing this onto my cardstock on the kitty and it's removing color where it hits the cardstock. So uh, that's why you want to apply it slowly um, and then just keep adding if you need it. So I decided to add a little bit more and you also want to wait a little bit. So it takes a little bit of time for the color to remove and that way you don't remove too much color and you get just that little extra texture that's provided by the stipple brushes. And so I'm going to keep doing this and make sure that I dab it on my tissue every single time. And I'm kind of going in an up and down motion, so it's kind of hard to view in the camera, but I'm going up and down to make sure I hit the tips of the brush. And now you can see the texture that's been created. 
So I'm going to cut this kitty out using some scissors. And now I'm going to work on the brick wall. So I'm going to be applying ink to one side and I want it to be on the inside of the brick. So I'm going to pick this side. In this case, it's the one with the Tim Holtz logo on it that has the insides of the brick. And I'm going to just cover the whole thing with some wet cement Hero Arts shadow ink. And then I'll take my cardstock, and this is the easiest way to do it, is to move it so that you're placing your cardstock on the dry side and you kind of position it there. I'm going to make a big area and then I'll just cut out what I like. So once I get it positioned, I'm going to slowly close my embossing folder and then I'm going to run it through my big shot. Now my sandwich is going to be tab one because that's what you use for embossing folders. I'm going to put an acrylic plate and then I'll put my embossing folder and then I'll put another acrylic plate and that's my sandwich for running through the big shot. So I'm going to go ahead and run that through and then when I come back I'm going to lift it up and you'll see how the ink is applied to the cardstock in the grooves. It's a pretty cool look. So I'm going to figure out which part of this wall I like the best and I'm going to cut it along the side and then I'm going to take that same ink, the wet cement, and I'm going to ink up the edges just to kind of give it a little bit more uh, depth. I'm not going to go over the whole thing, just on the edges. Now for my sentiment, I didn't want it kind of floating in space. I wanted to have it grounded in some way, so I decided to add a cloud. Um, and put the sentiment inside the cloud. So it's white on white, it's got some stitching. Um, I'm using this You Are My Happy Place from Altenew. But anyway, so it gives it uh, just a little bit extra detail so that it's not sort of floating out there. So I'm gonna apply all my pieces together. I'm gonna put some dimensionals on my cat so that it'll pop up a little bit. I'm gonna sit it right over the edge, not on the top. I'm gonna ha overlap it just a little bit. And then I'm gonna use the ATG tape runner for my sentiment so that it doesn't stand out too much. And then finally, I was gonna add some black enamel accents to the eyes, but I decided I didn't wanna risk messing that up and destroying all my coloring. So I decided to just darken it up with a Stampin' Up! black marker. And that is the card for today. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.